Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story and we are going to take a pause from divination for a moment to do an art supply video. So if you are not interested in art supplies, then this is not the video for you. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I just wanted to uh, do this uh, video for some people that have been following Instagram and kind of my journey with uh, learning to sketch and paint. And I had several questions, so I thought I would just address it in a video. And again, uh, we will be back to our regular um, scheduled divination, uh, but this is an art one. So you have been forewarned. So what I have out here are what I have learned or have come to learn as being really all you need to get started with sketching and with watercolor painting. Now, I am an extremely research-oriented person, and so I really research things well, but I did make some mistakes along the way that cost me a little bit of money, um, but now I feel pretty good about what I have ended up with. So. These are what first I'm going to talk about what I, I consider sort of my essentials, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about Kiritake paints, and then I'm going to show how I uh, made a travel kit out of Kiritake paints, and then I'm going to do a quick little show on my fountain pen and dip pen uh, findings because that again is um, uh, kind of goes together with art for me. So this is a list, or this is what I consider essential. I have recently found porcelain uh, mixing trays, and they are hands and feet above plastic palettes. Uh, I just cannot tell you how much easier it is to mix colors of paint on porcelain than it is plastic. So uh, I highly recommend getting one of these. I got this at Hobby Lobby, $6.99. Everything that I got except for the Kiritake paints, I bought either at Michael's, Joann's, or Hobby Lobby, and I used a coupon. You, in America, you can get apps for all three of those stores and have a 40% off coupon every day. Now, Joann's isn't every day, but Michael's and Hobby Lobby are, so I just literally went day by day and collected the things that I needed. So that's a tip for you. But this was about, I want to say $6.99, you can also just use a white porcelain plate. I have a little plate that I had picked up at a secondhand shop, and I also use that. I do like having one with these little wells, uh, though, to kind of keep things contained. So highly recommend that. Uh, I love this. This is a water container. Obviously, you can use multiple jars, but I do a lot of stuff at my desk, and I don't want multiple jars to tip over. So this I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I can't tell you. It wasn't very much. Something's in there. Uh, but this was really one of those purchases that seemed like a simple thing, but is really nice because I can get a couple dirty and keep one fairly clean so I'll rinse and then kind of rinse into the clean one so that I'm not contaminating my colors and that really helps for not having mucky colors. Now you can just use two jars, two cups of water, you know, whatever. This just for me reduces spillage. It's so nice and big and it sits on this base and so it does, I've never had any issue with this spilling over. I really, really love this. Um, um, so, and you can flip it over, obviously, and put that lid on top, but I don't really do. I guess I'm keep the water, but I just clean it up when I'm done. I actually really love this. But either way, have at least two, like, mason jars or cups devoted to it, one for clean water, one for dirty water, and you pretty much want to use those just for painting because even though you clean them up, you know, it still starts to get, and there are some, if you don't use non-toxic color, there are some pigments that are actually toxic, and so you don't want to be drinking unless it's very well clean. So I just say have two jars, two cups, um, or uh, something like this that's just devoted for painting and you don't eat off of it. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, brushes, get the best brushes you can get. That's something I'm in the middle of correcting. Um, it does make a difference. Uh, these silver ones you can get are sort of cheap grade that are decently cheap at Michael's. Uh, these aren't bad, uh, but 
I did get this synthetic squirrel uh, at Hobby Lobby, which was a little bit more. Um, but again, with a, I'll say maybe $10. Still not expensive compared to some other brushes, uh, good brushes, and eventually I will be. But until I knew which ones I would use a lot. Uh, but this one and this one is... Um, are decent brushes and it makes a big difference. Uh, but in terms of sizes that I recommend just to get started, uh, now I don't paint big paintings. Uh, I'm staying fairly small. I like this size here. Uh, even when I have a bigger piece of paper, I usually cut it down to something smaller. So I'm not doing giant size papers. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. But you need one larger one. This is a 14. Uh, the staple for watercolor painting is round brushes. Make sure that the brushes say watercolor. It makes a difference. Uh, so uh, I recommend a 14 round, a 10 round, and a 6 round. Sometimes you'll see 8s, but I, I have an 8, but there's hardly any difference between the 10 and the 8. If it's a good one, it makes a nice tip like this, I just, it works fine. So those are, so 14, 10, and a 6 round. Uh, a 10 flat brush, because I like to urban paint, I do like to have a flat brush uh, for it just works for build filling in buildings and things like that. I also do actually like a really fine line one but Isabel ate it so I have to get another one. This is just one of those fluffy things but I act you know that you know it's just not it's, it's not a necess necessity it's a fan brush but I actually really do like this for grass for realistic grass and even for scrunching in trees. So I this is one of those like um you know, not necessary brushes that I actually use. So these are the main brushes that I use. I have a lot more than this because I wasn't sure what I was going to use, but I recommend these, kind. not even this, but I recommend these uh, just to get started. There we have it. Uh, paper. Uh, get the best paper you can buy. Uh, I cannot stress this enough. It makes a difference. Um, I use mostly the Strathmore 400 series, 160 pounds because it's really available, readily available. Uh, this is a little um, journal that you can get. Uh, that I don't remember is Strathmore. I can't remember the weight of this. I got it at Hobby Lobby. I mostly use this for color swatching, uh, testing some things out. This is a tester before I was going to do it. Then I, I was going to use this as a journal journal, but um, you know I'm going to use this more as a testing and and kind of that kind of thing. So, But you can get this relatively cheaply at Hobby Lobby and Hobby Lobby always has their papers going on 50% off. Um, but get, don't get anything under 140 pounds in my opinion. So for example this is this and Strathmore has different colors. This dark brown color is the 400 series and it is cold pressed and it is 140 pounds. Um, don't get anything less than that, in my opinion. It makes a difference. It makes things harder. Um, so, yeah, I am eventually, now I just finished up this pad. Uh, the next bigger size pad like this that I get, I'm going to get the arches, which is even, is the better stuff. Uh, because the paper makes a difference. Um, so there is that. That's important. Um, something that's hard, like this is a thing that people actually use to paint on. It's called clayboard. I got it at Michael's in the clearance. I have a big piece, this piece, and I have a big piece that I got on clearance. But you can use an old clipboard. There's all that, especially if you're using smaller. This is generally the size I use, and you could use an old clipboard because I'm generally using this size paper. So you need that, and then you need, very important, masking tape to tape it down because it does as it gets wet it swells up the cheaper the paper the more it swells up but you want to tape it down uh, to the surface so that it will swell up least amount uh, and you can and it also makes the really lovely edges well you're not going to see on these let me show you well here I think in my journal I have an example because so I did tape even in this journal which I'm going to talk about in a second but like this, you get these lovely edges that kind of um, watercolor is known for. That comes from taping the paper down. So some scotch or some masking tape. 
You don't have to get artist tape, you can get masking tape. So there we've covered the paper, masking tape, and something to tape it down to. It can just be a board, a piece of plywood. It needs to be firm, uh, an old wooden um, clipboard. They do have, like Hobby Lobby does have artist boards that are pretty much like this with a hole in the side of it. Uh, they're about $5.99. Uh, I just had gotten this on clearance for hardly anything, so I had two, got two sizes of this. Uh, we talked about brushes, we talked about that, we talked about porcelain palettes. Uh, the other thing with paper, I'm really going to be journaling my process because I'm kind of treating it also as a journal. Uh, and so I did pick up a, I love this, this is a Moleskine watercolor journal and I love it. So um, I have, haven't had it super long. Uh, I have, here's this one that I did that I love, or I've put notes, the date that uh, I did it with a dip pen in India ink, I did it with Kurataki watercolors, and it was uh, copyrighted to Peter Sheeler, that's somebody's YouTube channel that I've been doing tutorials on. So I have that sort of information about it. Eventually I'm going to put littler sketches on this side, I haven't been quite willing yet to do full paintings on the back sides of these, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this was one that I did that I was testing myself off of an actual photograph. Uh, and then this was another Peter Sheeler that I did with a dip pen, Kurataki Cut Watercolors. This was on one I've added in just yesterday where it was kind of a study on a leaf. I'm probably going to do an acorn up here. So I'm going to do some littler things, I think, on the backs. Um, this was a, water, obviously, watercolor. So I said, inspired by increased card from the Dow Oracle and the opium card from Deste. Uh, the date, it's, I've called it Field of Poppies, and it is Kurataki paint. There's, I didn't use any ink on this one. Uh, so yeah, and this is one I'm going to be doing some lilacs, but I haven't started that. I just kind of got the rough sketch going there. Uh, I love this. I highly recommend it. It was recommended to me by Foxfire Tarot, who is an artist, and she was 100% uh, right. So paper matters, brushes matter. Um, for sketching, you're going to need a sharpener, you're going to need a white uh, eraser, and you're going to need a moldable eraser. It's kind of molds so you can get in little spaces and it doesn't leave any uh, racer uh, bits. Uh, but I quite like these try ones. This was my son's as well as this was his pencil. Uh, and it just makes me feel good to have that connection with him. Um, but um, yeah, you want a white eraser, a moldable eraser, a sharpener, and a pencil. Not a super hard pencil. Uh, they recommend uh, two, 2B and HB pencils, which I have in my other kit that I'm going to show you. Um, I like ink and watercolor. That's what I'm doing. So, for example, this is an example of ink and watercolor. I have India inked these uh, the outlines, uh, whereas this is just a watercolor painting. There's no ink used here right so I really love this this is a style that I'm working on learning this is also ink and watercolor I really this is ink and watercolor I just aesthetically like it I also like these but I'm kind of working to learn to sketch I bought this set of uh, Faber Castell pit pens and I got the set for uh, $15 at Joann's, no, at Michael's. You can also get these at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I don't know about Joann's. Uh, it comes with a set of extra fine, which is extra small, small, medium, and brush tip. Uh, I mostly use this extra small. I will, when I rebuy these, I'll probably just be rebuying an extra small. Although I have used the brush. I actually do quite like the brush. So um, this is India ink and this will not activate with water. So you can paint over it and it will not run. Uh, this on the other hand is just a fun thing I wanted to mention. This is an Elegant Writer by Speedball. You can get these at Michael's uh, or Hobby Lobby. This is a calligraphy pen that when you put you write on it, when you get it wet, it will get wet once and run into beautiful colors, but then after that it's set and you can watercolor over it. That's just something fun. It's not required, but I absolutely love playing with this. So, um, so for example, 
this is what I mean by that. Uh, so you can see I sketch, but then when I got it wet, it kind of it starts to bleed, and it's beautiful. But that will bleed. Fountain pens will bleed. Uh, so for t traditional fountain pen ink, people use it in or that, and then get it wet and, and kind of make a wash of the ink. Now you can get uh, permanent uh, non water soluble fountain pen ink but but basic ink that you have in a water a fountain pen will bleed and so you don't want to draw in that and then start to try to watercolor and then you're just going to have a mess of ink um, so you want india ink so either pit pens these are the easiest or what i've been doing and i'm loving is uh dip pens a lot of people use dip pens for um watercolor uh, for inking and then sketching uh, for comic book sketching but certainly for inking and watercolor and so I had it got speedball black uh, permanent India ink uh, a set of drawing mapping and drawing nibs which you can get at Hobby Lobby with just a cheap it uh, came with just a cheap little thing which works fine but this um, I'll have to get the paper for this. Uh, I'll have a link to, oh here, you can see it. Tachikawa, ta Takakawa. These are about $7.50 on Amazon and it's amazing. It's so much nicer. The blue one comes with a cap. There is one with a white sponge, but that doesn't come with the cap. And the cap is actually handy to protect your nib. So um, I, that's again, India ink. So I pencil it and then I dip pen and uh, draw the lines with this. But for on the go, or if you don't want to dip pen these pit pens, or microns, microns are this like these, same thing. As long as it says India ink, or archival ink, that kind of thing, it needs to be permanent. But the microns work, and these uh, Faber-Castell pit pens for sure, uh, they won't bleed. So, uh, let me put this back over here. And then lastly, just in terms of necessities, right, is paint. Now, this is where I wasted some money. You can get cheap watercolor paints like these. Uh, these are probably $5 at Michael's for all these different colors, and it's a really nice way to see if it even interests you. However, if you're really learning to paint, or you really want to paint, these are not good. They are chalky when they dry, they don't mix as well, they don't act, if you're trying to follow a tutorial, they don't act the way paint that, that you're seeing on the tutorial acts. Um, it just simply isn't meant for really... Um, trying to learn the medium and you're going to start fighting against the paint and thinking you're doing a bad job and it's really simply because you don't have the right uh, paints or the right tools and so paint and brushes and paper make a difference in watercolor you can start watercolor quite cheaply uh, but you will end up if you love it you will end up repurchasing which is what I ended up doing even though I researched quite well so once I saw you know what I'm really liking this I'm gonna I would like to do this I want to learn this I really researched and I decided to go with, I knew everybody was saying buy the best that you could buy, uh, you know, so I didn't figure I should get artist quality paint, to be honest. I thought, you know, why should I do that? I'm not an artist. Student grade, which is okay. So I got the Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors. You can get these at Michael's. These run about $5 a tube, but I used coupons, and then they had a buy one, get one free sale. So I, you know, I never spent more than about $2.50 a tube, but that still adds up. Um, and these were okay. These were a lot better than the cheaper things, but I was still struggling with uh, things not being the same as the tutorials, which were using artist grade. The paint wasn't acting exactly the same. Things were getting mucky. It wasn't blooming in the same way. These are good. Now, I'm not going to say these are horrible or anything like that. I know a lot of people use Winsor Newton Cotman, which is Winsor Newton student grade. They also have a professional grade. This is their student grade. Um, but I will say that when I shifted, so the, I got these, I probably spent, let's be honest, uh, all together, I probably spent about $40 on paints 
and I was, you know, I was doing okay. I was getting, making some things, but I was, I had some frustrations, and I didn't know what was causing the frustrations. And then I got a um, uh, rebate, basically, from Amazon for Kindle books from like 2013, 2009 to 2013. And so I had a nice little gift card trunk miraculously appear. So I bought my daughter some books and I bought her phone case and then I bought myself this Kiritake paint which I'd heard a lot about because it's pan paint it's Japanese watercolor it's not exactly equivalent I'm going to talk about this in a minute a little bit more it's not exactly equivalent to what I guess Western watercolor in that it's a little bit more opaque uh, it's made for um, Japanese style watercolor and it's a little bit more opaque meaning it um, isn't as translucent but you can make it translucent you just have to be aware of you have to add more water because it comes off the on the brush beautifully pigmented I mean I was just blown away when I first used this to do something I never wanted to go back to the student ones now this is considered artist grade uh, although it's not probably to the same level as say Schmincke or Schmincke, Schmincke or maybe even the Windsor Newton Cop or professional grade but from what I understand it's pretty close and it is quite a ways above what I was using before uh, the pigment, the way the colors blend, uh, the way they dry on the paper. Um, yeah, they're just uh, heads and tails for a really relatively cheap price. So when I first used my my uh, gift card, I purchased this like struggle between which set to buy. I should have bought the 36 pan and I didn't. I bought this 24 pan and I fell absolutely in love with it. This was, uh, you have to watch, uh, but uh, it is more expensive at Hobby Lobby. This same one I think was $40 at Hobby Lobby. I got it for $22 on Amazon and I didn't have to pay for it. Now I think that this 24 pan set is really great for most people. I think it's a great starter one. You can get it for around $22, but the pigment is just so much better than any of the, I highly recommend this set or the Securitaki uh, paints for anybody looking to get into watercolor that doesn't want to spend a lot. Like I'm personally going to start saving up and when my birthday comes in the fall, I am probably going to have everybody put money in towards getting a Schmincke set eventually. That's kind of, that's the professional grade that I kind of probably going to go with. I have time to still research, but more than likely that's what I'll go with. But in the meantime, for a least amount of money, uh, to be able to get at least that feeling of that quality paints, um, I highly recommend this Kiritake. It's just a, it's kind of get your feet in, but still be really good pigments, pigmented colors. Um, now, so I first got this, but then I was like, oh, I should have gotten the 36. Once I saw how wonderful it was, I thought I should have gotten the 36 color uh, because uh, there were more some more blues in it that I you know wanted, and I was just like, I should have gotten it. So, but then somebody was made note that you can buy these pans. So these come in pans, and you can buy these separately. So I thought, oh, I'll just get the other pans that I didn't get uh, out of the you know the the 12 other pans that I didn't get but it ended up because I found the 36 pans set which was more when I was looking but I found a Amazon that sold it for $27 this ended up being cheaper than me because I needed um, all of uh, whoops I needed all of um, the 12 pans plus I needed um, another burnt sienna because I wanted it for my travel set. So it ended up being cheaper to just get the 30, this 36 pan. So I ordered the 36 pan and so you can see all 36 pans. It does include silver like a um, it's not silver because when you put it on white paper you can't see anything but the gleam. It's more like a pearlescent uh, and a kind of a gold gold and a coppery gold colors which are quite lovely. I won't probably use those a whole lot. I think whites and blacks are, are kind of useless in watercolor packs. 
Uh, but then here we've got all these gorgeous colors. And I went through off of my uh, Cotman colors that I had in my original pan and was able to find pretty close matches to all of them, like cadmium red, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, garbage yellow, vermilion, um, the Arlesian, uh, permanent rose, uh, yellow ochre, hooker green, viridian green, um, sap green, those are the three greens I use, cobalt blue, ultramarine, cerulean, kind of phthalo blue, not perfect, but usable, Prussian blue for sure, uh, burnt sienna for sure, and then sapia, or kind of a raw umber, not the burnt umber, but kind of a raw umber, but it's more like sapia, it's pretty close to sapia. So all of my main colors that I've been working with, I was able to find uh, matches to. Uh, so absolutely gorgeous uh, this was again most of the time on Amazon these are more like 36 37 dollars for the 36 uh, I found the one for 27 so and I have my friend snatch one up also so I yeah highly recommend this I don't know if you're going to be able to see the difference but uh, for example this is done with the Cotman colors uh, which is student grade uh, this one as well as, and again, this one wasn't meant to be a finished piece. This is just me testing some perspective, but even with this one, um, when it dries, it's not like it's bad, but there is a really big difference between the finish dry of that and say, obviously these are not using the same colors. Um, to get them all in here. There is a vibrancy to the Kiritaki that you simply, I don't think, get with the Cotman. Um, those are kind of similar color tones. Um, but yeah, there's just a vibrancy. There's a slight chalkiness to the Cotman that you don't get with the Kiritaki colors. Uh, and so for for the price of dipping your pet toes in I would say get one of the sets it comes in 36 24 18 and 12 I think are the, the sizes that it comes in I think that the 24 is a nice one uh, if you just want to dip your toes in but again this was 22 and this was 27 so I'm gonna either I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this one I'm either gonna save the colors as backups I had to take the sapia out for my travel or I'm going to purchase the sapia separately and then I can trade maybe this set for somebody who needs it. I haven't decided yet. Uh, because it came out of a gift card, I don't feel horribly bad about it. I might just save it as backup pans. Um, but, so, there we have it. That's everything there is needed to talk about what you need to get started uh, and what I think is the best way to get a coat get started in a cheapest way cheapest way with good paints so let me pause for a minute because I want to just show you I because I'm going to be working with these colors I wanted to have a travel set you know for being outside because I tend to go out and sketch and paint and on in location but I don't want to then use different paints I wanted to use these same paints so I made a travel set and I want to show you that okay so I went to Joanne Fabrics and picked up this little craft box. It's about a six and a half by four and a half. Uh, it's not perfectly square. It kind of dips in a little bit. Uh, it cost me about two fifty because it was fifty percent off. I thought, you know, I'm going to grab that because maybe that would work to be able to put these pans in. I purchased a twelve pan set. Uh, so this is a twelve pan of the Kiritaki. Um, I didn't put the black. You can mix black. It's not too difficult to mix black. And um, these are the colors that I picked. A uh, lemon yellow and yellow ochre because uh, I use yellow ochre a lot because I do landscapes. A warm and a cool red. A cool and a, a warm and a cool blue. Um, or blue, green, uh, two blues, so two blues, two greens, two reds, two yellows, and then uh, burnt sienna, and I took from my 24 pan, I took the uh, sapia color, uh, because again, I use these colors a lot. These three colors are my, like earth tones for landscapes. Um, so, 
I went ahead and made this swatch because in, at least until I get comfortable with the colors because they look you know can look very different and when they're so highly pigmented they can look very color different on paper as they do in the um, in the actual pan so I stuck that on here for now it's just taped down so that I can pull it up if I were to change things so um, I taped that on plus that gives the added benefit of making this white so that when I go to mix paints on here you know the color is going to show not whatever is underneath here um, I have a, you can get a pack of Pentel water brushes this has a small medium and large brush and they are water brushes they hold water so you can fill these up and they have your water right there and then you have your brushes right there great for being outside when you want to you know kind of do some sketching and then fill in uh, so I have that and they all fit right there as you saw to uh, Viva Napkin. Let me just say, paper towels are also one of those things that should have been a necessity, and you really want the Viva ones. You don't want ones that are stiff uh, and that have patterns, because when you go to dab it, you will get that pattern in your paint. So non-patterned paper towels, you will go through a lot of them. Then you can see I have two, four, six, eight room for 10 of the Kuretake pans. There was a slightly bigger one of these, uh, which I could have gotten, but I was trying to, it was wider and bigger, and I was trying to keep it small. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine, I'm happy with the colors, because again, I've got the, the yellows, the reds, you can mix. You know, your primary colors, you can then, you don't even really need green because you can mix that with yellow and blue. Uh, but I like have, I do a lot of, again, uh, landscape, so I like having the greens. I've got my um, neutral colors, uh, or my uh, earth tone colors, one, two, three. I've got blues, greens, reds, and yellow. I can warm up the yellow if I don't want to use yellow ochre kind of color. Um, but this to me is a very good travel colors to, for me to have. I did stick white. Now, because uh, Kiritake is a little bit more opaque than traditional um, watercolor, you can actually uh, use the white on top of to kind of, if you, it, you know, watercolor, you're supposed to not really use white. You're supposed to um, leave the paper part white that you want to have be white. But if you mess that up, um, or if you just want some speckles of white on something, you can pull it off with this white. Uh, so I did uh, stick this in the lid. I don't know that I'm going to keep this here. Uh, what I did is I used uh, this tacky putty uh, that you can get to hang up things. And so it is just, you can see that at the bottom, it's just tacked in. I can pull these up easily and replace them if I decide I'm not using a certain paint and I want to put a different one in. I can easily do that. And so this may not stay here, but uh, for now I went, because I had an extra two white, I think one, two white pans. I thought, well, I'm going to stick it in there and see. Um, so, uh, so I have that stuck in there right now. I have a Micron. I have it actually stuck with some of that putty so this wouldn't fall around, uh, but this is a Micron um, 03 India ink. I will be switching this out for my favorite. I got to pick up another Faber-Castell extra small, the XS or extra fine. This one has been chewed to death, but for now this works. This, this nib is almost ruined, uh, gone, so I'm going to have to replace this, but it will fit right in there. Um, I have a piece of moldable, moldable eraser. I have a pencil that I cut in half and then sharpened, so I have a pencil here. I have a toothpick, and I have it stuck in here. I'm going to have to, uh, there we go, a piece of cut up credit card or gift card. Uh, it's nice for scraping. Um, so I might just try, there we go, that goes better there, uh, so it doesn't fall underneath the pans. So um, I also have a little metal uh, sharpener that will can go right there as well, or right back here. Actually, I can just slide that right down in there. Uh, but there, so you can see that I have everything um, that I need to uh, be outdoors or off someplace uh, in Paris or something like that, uh, ready to, I'm going to get a um, 
because I don't want this to get all stretched out. But I'm going to get a like a headband, a stretchy headband, you know, like the sport thin ones, and just wrap those two together. And, and look at that. Bam! I will have everything I need to sketch, ink, and paint um, wherever I'm at. So I was really excited about that. Uh, little project there because again with the kirataki, you know, they're bigger pans and so it's a little bit harder to come up with a way to make that work that is compact and can kind of hold everything at once. And it's pretty s stuck in there, like this doesn't really, there's not a lot rattling about. What you hear is the toothpick and a little bit of the pencil, but it's really well, well in there. So that's that. I wanted to show that one more thing and I will wrap this up for those of you. Well, if you're watching this, if you've gotten this far, it's because you like crafty stuff. Uh, the other thing that I have been very much loving is, um, again, fountain pens. So Miss Brenda had given me this gorgeous fountain pen, which right now I have, I don't want to write in my actual journal, but this is a pad of Strathmore writing paper where I've already kind of written some things. Uh, so this right now has a blue the wheel turns because I'm, I'm reading the wheel of time right now. <laughs> so that's got a beautiful ultramarine blue in it right now. Um, and this is a medium nib and it has a um, converter so that instead of like a little cartridge you can actually suck loose paint up into this converter I can rinse it all out and change it out when I want to this I haven't used very long with the ultramarine blue and I love that color she had given me some samples you can see how it's blue I don't know if you can see that how it's actually the back of the nib has you can see the blue ink in there because it's a clear nib I really like it uh, so that's a medium nib. So, so Miss Brenda gave me my very first fountain pen and I was addicted as soon as I got it. But this is the one that I just recently got. I didn't buy this. I believe they pro probably, I think this was about 40, maybe these are about $40-ish. She had two of them. So she had a green one and a blue one, so she gave me one. Um, this is one that I got with my... Um, credit and it is a Pilot Metropolitan and it was $15. Uh, for $15 it came uh, with a cartridge, one black cartridge which is about empty. Look at that. It's about gone because uh, I squirted some of it out accidentally. But it came with this. It also comes with a converter so that you can, oh and look what I did. I will say this. I've made more of a mess with a fountain pen than I have made with a dip pen. Can we just make that statement right here? So this I'm going to be cleaning up and uh, putting new ink into. I want to get some purple, but uh, but anyways, it comes with a cartridge that I messed up, which I think is why I'm, I'm getting such a mess, so I just need to wash this all out and get fresh ink into it. Uh, but it came with that as well as a converter, which for $15 is crazy. And it writes, this is, this is a fine nib, and it writes like a dream. Um, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, um, and it's $15. So if you want to try a good fountain pen, uh, but don't want to put a lot of money into it, this I highly recommend the Pilot Metropolitan. It's just, it's amazing, and I highly recommend it. So there's that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you can get what's called a dip pen, and I actually really love to both write with this as well as draw with it. Now, when I'm drawing with it, um, I'm using the Speedball uh, ink, a black, oh, well it doesn't matter, it's all India ink. Uh, and so you can write with, you really can't use fountain pen ink with this though because, oh I know I needed to get a pliers. I had gotten some, uh, I shouldn't have left that in there because it was wet and got left in there. So you should take your nibs out and you should not get water or anything into your nib thing. But, um, now I'm probably going to make a mess out of this because of that. But you just slide your nibs in. So this is a writing nib. And 
Uh, this one is probably, I'll see if I can clean that up. Um, this is some India ink from Hobby Lobby. It's uh, Bombay and it's in a gorgeous um, red violet. The wheel turns. And it's gorgeous. And you can continue to write on and on and on. I absolutely love it. I keep a little bottle of um, alcohol. This is just rubbing alcohol to clean it in between. I just kind of swish it in there. And then always, you know, you're always having a, a paper towel around to clean it off because you don't, that's India ink and it's a pain if you let it set there for long. And then I keep a little bottle or a little jar of just plain water. And so between the two of them and a paper towel, if I'm just going to, you know, wait a little bit between writing, um, I just go ahead and uh, clean it up and let it dry. And then it's ready to go for the next use. Uh, and I do really like this one particular one. Uh, like I said, this is a Takikawa. Uh, I really recommend it. It's like $7.50 on Amazon. And so, close this up because, you know, I don't need to dump permanent India ink all over everything. So I'm going to put these up, which I just keep on the shelf. Um, so yeah, so I have this again, this is writing paper for, for writing notes or whatever. And then this is a beautiful Japanese, um, notebook. It has the sparrow because it's a name means a sparrow. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's gorgeous paper to write on. And so this is going to uh, be my regular journal. Um, and I will probably stay with this. I love this paper to write on. It's absolutely amazing. And so, yeah, fountain pens, again, cheap way, Pilot Metropolitan. I know somebody who bought a Pilot retractable point $150 pen and this Pilot $15 one and said they write the exact same. So, get you one of those if you want to put your toes into fountain pens. Uh, cheap way to get the pens in and it right, this comes in a medium and a fine and it's absolutely gorgeous. So there we have it. My quick little what I'm doing with art supplies and uh, so for people who have asked, again, other people who shouldn't probably still be watching, uh, we'll return to our regular scheduled divination things next. <laughs> oh, I will show you one thing, though, because not everybody's on my Instagram. Um, because that will wrap it into being like divination. One of the projects that I did was this uh, painting, which I showed you the poppies. This was actually, you know, kind of about from the um, increase card of the Dow Oracle and the opium card from Death Day. And a combination of the, here's the opium card. I don't have the Dow one nearby, but it has this field of poppies like this. And it just, so I, I made it, I taped this off, did this, take the tape off, and then put the poppies in here. And, um, you know, together, because this is about escapism in some ways, and this was about increasing all the abundance, and it's about um, living in with the abundance, not to, um, and not trying to escape it, uh, not to try to escape our lives, but like live fully in our in the moment. So it became almost an oracle in and of itself, and so I, I do tend to plan to do more like that. Uh, where I may com combine ideas to almost create a painted oracle, you know, for myself. So, so yep, there we have it. That's where Ben, uh, that's what I'm doing with um, artwork. <laughs> so, have a wonderful day.